the next section of chapter one talks about the importance of testing the title is why is testing necessary testing is necessary because when we do testing on components and systems and their associated documentation the requirements and the user stories this reduces the risk of failures in operation environment when the developer fixes these defects this contributes to the quality the quality is increased so we as testers measure the quality and then when the developer fixes the bugs the quality is increased testing is important also because it may be required to meet contractual or legal requirements we need to make sure that we are following the contract with the customer that there is no legal problem in our project that we follow the industry specific standards if there are any throughout the history of computing software systems are delivered into operation but because of defects and failures and because the software doesn't do what it is intended to do this makes the stakeholders and the clients not happy this is why we need testing we apply the test techniques to reduce the frequency of these problems these problems will happen but we need to reduce the likelihood of them happening in operation environment how do we do this by applying the appropriate test techniques with the appropriate level of expertise we need some experts in testing in the appropriate test levels and at the appropriate points in software development life cycle this is what we are going to try to do in this course let's take some examples of how testing contributes to success of the project. If testers are involved in requirements reviews, okay, the product owner or the business analyst wrote the requirements and we reviewed them, which is static testing. This identification and removal of requirements defects reduces the risk of incorrect functionality in the software. Another example is if the tester works closely with system designers. This increases both developer and tester understanding of the design and how to test it. When this happens, it reduces the risk of design problems that happen in the software. Another example, if the tester works closely with developers while we are writing the code, this increases each party, the developer and tester understanding of the code and the way of testing it. This reduces the risk of defects in the code and the testing of it. Also, if the tester validates the software, which means that we make sure that what we did is what the customer wants, this increases the likelihood that our software meets the stakeholder needs and satisfies requirements. So we need testing in requirements gathering, in design, in development, and in delivery to the customer. This is why the tester should be someone who has a broad knowledge of all these fields. You don't need to be a master of all these skills. This is not easy, but you need a broad knowledge about design, about development, about requirements gathering. Let's now talk about quality assurance and testing. People often use the phrase quality assurance or QA to refer to testing. This is not correct. Quality assurance is different than testing, but there is a relationship between them. We have a large concept, which is quality management. Quality management is something that ties quality assurance and testing together. Quality management includes all the activities that are used in organizations with regard to quality. So like we said, quality management includes both quality assurance and quality control. Quality assurance focuses on the process, okay? We need to make sure that our process is done correctly. If the process is done correctly, the work product that is created by this process will have a higher quality, which means that we will prevent defects. Also in quality assurance, we use root cause analysis, which is identifying the cause of the defects. Why did this defect and those defects happen? We focus on this cause, the root cause, and we try to solve it. If we solve the root cause, the defects will not happen in the future. Quality control cares about the product, the quality of the product. This is why it involves various activities. One of them is testing activities. So testing activities are part of quality control and they are related to quality assurance. Test activities also are part of the overall software development because testing is considered a part of the development life cycle from requirements gathering to deployment. And also testing is part of the maintenance process. After we deliver the customer his software, if he has any complaints, 
we should do maintenance testing. We test the software again to make sure that there are no problems in it and if there are any problems we should solve them. Since quality assurance cares about the execution of the process, then we can say that quality assurance supports proper testing. If the process is correct and of course testing is part of this process, then testing will be done in a better way. Let's now talk about the difference between errors, defects and failures. Persons make errors or mistakes. Okay, so we have a developer, he makes an error or a mistake. This error or mistake can lead to a defect, fault, or bug in the software code or in the work product that we are doing. The error that led to the defect in this work product can lead to a defect in another work product. How can this happen? For example, while we are gathering requirements, requirements elicitation, the product owner or the business analyst made an error. This error led to a defect in the requirements. Okay, he wrote one requirement in a wrong way. This defect will cause a programming error that will cause a defect in the code. So the error in the requirements elicitation led to a defect in the code at the end. But what happens if the code is executed with this defect? This may cause a failure. But will this happen in all circumstances? No. Sometimes defects cause failures and sometimes no. For example, some defects require very specific inputs to cause failures. For example, we can say that we have a defect in the code if the person purchases 10,000 items at the same time, the software will crash. In real world, maybe no customer will buy 1,000 items at the same time. So this situation or this failure is rarely or never happening in real world. But on the other hand, some defects cause failures that are easy to identify. So why do errors happen? The first reason for errors is time pressure. We don't have much time, so we do a lot of errors or a lot of mistakes. The second thing is human fallibility. We are humans, we make mistakes. We are created this way. Inexperienced or insufficiently skilled project participants. Some of the developers are not experienced enough, don't have experience in this field. So in this case, we think that errors from them will be increased. Miscommunication between project participants, like communication about requirements and design. So the project participants are not communicating in a good way. This means that the person who is gathering requirements doesn't deliver the requirements to us in a good way. So in this case, we expect that the design may have problems. The coding, of course, also will have problems. Complexity of the code, the design, or the architecture. We are working on a big project, on a complex project. This way, the likelihood of errors will be increased, of course. Misunderstanding about intrasystem and intersystem interfaces. So our system will have intersystem interfaces, which means interfaces between its components and intrasystem interfaces which means interfaces with other systems around it. So if we don't understand these interfaces, errors will be increased. New unfamiliar technologies, we are working on a new technology that we are not familiar with. In this case, our errors will be increased. All of these reasons are internal factors, but there are also external factors which are caused environmental conditions, things that we can't control, like radiation, electromagnetic fields, or pollution. These things can cause problems in the firmware, in the operating system, for example, that we are working on, or in the hardware that we use. In this case, our project doesn't have any problem. Our application or our website is okay, but the environment that it works on has some problems. In this case, failures will happen, but you are not the reason for these failures. But are all unexpected test results can be considered as failures? No, there is something called false positive. False positive means that you, the tester, made a mistake. You executed your testing in a wrong way, or you entered some wrong test data, or you used the test environment in a wrong way. In this case, you might find a defect in the software, but this defect is not a defect. This is a problem in your execution. On the other hand, there is something called false negative, which means that there is a defect that you should find, but you didn't find it. Why? Because you made a mistake in executing the testing. So false positive means there is no defect, but you detected a defect because of your mistake. False negative means there is a defect, but you didn't find it because of a problem in your execution. The root causes of defects are the earliest actions that caused the defects. Like we said, we should analyze the defects to find their root causes so that these defects don't happen again in the future. This focusing on root cause analysis leads to 
process improvements. We improve our process so these types of defects don't happen in the future. For example, we have a problem that the interest payments are not calculated correctly in our code and the customer is not happy of course. Here, this code, the defective code, was written for a user story that was ambiguous. So what is the reason of the problem here? The reason is the user story, the requirement. Who wrote the user story? The product owner. So this problem in the interest calculation happened because the product owner doesn't understand this field deeply. And we found that a lot of the user stories are written in a wrong way. Here, what is the root cause? The root cause is the misunderstanding of the product owner. What is the solution? The solution is to train the product owner on this field so that he understands it in a better way and writes a better user stories. If he writes better user stories, the developer will write a better code and the problem will not happen again in the future. In this example, the complaint that came from the customer is the effect. The incorrect interest payments are the failures. The wrong calculation in the code is the defect, which comes from an original defect, which is the ambiguity of the user story. The root cause of this defect is the lack of knowledge on the part of the product owner. And the mistake, of course, is the mistake that he did while writing the user story.